Touchdown BC is sponsored by CFC. CanadaFootballChat.com is a national amateur football website and a source for high school and recruiting news in Canada. CFC's mission is to promote players, coaches, administrators, teams, and leagues from coast to coast. 40 plus local reporters write CFC's content covering Canadian NCAA and CIS recruiting and high school players and teams across the continent. Touchdown BC is also sponsored by Chris Peckett. Veteran trial lawyer and football coach is now restricting his law practice to motor vehicle personal injury claims. Call his office at 604-519-6060 for a free consultation. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 3 of Touchdown BC. I'm Ty Clark. This is Adam Kordick. Ty, what the heck are you wearing? Uh, a shirt. Well, it's, uh, it looks like it's the same shirt as mine, but uh, besides the point, uh, we should get on with the show, don't you think? Yeah. Summer has officially ended, which means the start of conference games for high school football season is here. This past weekend, the Eastern Conference kicked the regular season off with three pivotal matchups, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's get caught up with the rest of the games from across our province this past weekend. Later is now. Let's get right into the conference games. Kelowna taking on Lord Tweetsmer. First play of the game, Kelowna executes a perfect onside kick, and the Owls would recover it. A few plays later, Parker Simpson dishes it off to Seth Campbell. On an option play, Campbell finds the edge, taking it from 15 yards out. The Panthers would respond on their next drive. Trey Blair takes the handoff, finds a seam, and runs it in for the score. It would be all owls after that, though. Parker Simpson will find a streaking Adam Dubais, and the kid with the best first name hauls it in for the 30-yard passing major. Kelowna's next drive. Simpson is at it again. He gets the ball from center. Now watch this. Simpson scrambles around for eight seconds, ducking and dodging Panther defenders before getting rid of it and finding an open Campbell 30 yards downfield. Second quarter. Simpson calls his own number from seven yards out and would take about five Tweedsmere defenders with him to the end zone. Remember Adam Dubais, who caught that TD earlier in the game? Well, he can play a little QB as well, hucking it up to his wide up, who makes an unbelievable jump ball catch. Now it's Simpson's turn again. He takes the ball, finds the edge, and has the room. Meets a defender at the 20, and with a Madden-like truck stick, goes right through him, then hits the B button, and takes it the rest of the way for the major. It was the Parker Simpson show. He eludes pressure, runs around a bit, and then finds his favorite target, Seth Campbell, in the back of the end zone. Simpson finishes the day with two TDs on the ground and two through the air. Owl's next drive, it's their other pivot, Debye's, who says, I can get the ball to Campbell too. He would find the receiver, and Campbell takes it down into Tweedsmere territory. Next play, Debye's would run it in. Kelowna over Tweedsmere, 49 to eight, in this opening Eastern Conference matchup. Now let's take a look at the rest of the games from around the Eastern Conference. This is what the standings look like in the Eastern Conference through one week. Now to the rest of the games. Salmon Arm taking on Fulton. It's Fulton with a tricky play early. QB Isaac Olsen flips it to his running back, who flips it to the wideout, who gives it back to Olsen, who heaves it up to a wide open Caden Doyle, who takes it the rest of the way with not a defender in sight. Salmon Arm would score next though, with Jace Robert running it in for the score. Next drive in the second queue, it's Robert again, who gets his second rushing touchdown of the game. Salmon Arm up. One score at the half. Early third cue, it's Cody Jordan who comes out of nowhere and gets this massive strip sack. Salmon Arm recovers. 
Later in that drive, it's big number 34, Mark Pachadli, who rumbles on a great run, breaking tackles and getting the score. Late third, Fulton's next drive, Olsen would find Doyle again, this time for an even bigger touchdown. This guy doesn't need to be wide open to find the end zone. Great play. Salmon Arm would prove to be too strong though. First with this Hayden Henning 26 yard rushing touchdown. And then they would finish the game off in the fourth with Ben Leah running it from five yards out. Salmon Arm wins this one, 32 to 12 over Fulton. Rutland versus Vernon. Vernon gets on the board first. Number 21 takes the handoff and then pulls off one of the sickest jukes I've seen this year. Takes it in for the score. Vernon up seven. The Panthers would get the ball back and will capitalize. Vernon's QB dumps it off to Ben Pladdock and Big Ben would do the rest, showing off his speed and taking it 40 yards downfield. A couple plays later, Big Ben is at it again this time with the 10 yard catch and score. Panthers up 14 zip at the half. Rutland would not give up though. Opening kickoff of the second half, the Voodoo's number 34 receives the kick, misses one guy, misses another, and finds a hole, and it's pure speed after that. He could go all the way. After a Panthers turnover, Rutland looks to tie the game up. First with this bomb of a throw, Couple plays later, the Voodoo gets the touchdown on a QB keeper. We have got ourselves a game, folks. 14-14 after three quarters. Late fourth, Vernon looks to go ahead with a field goal, but the snap goes over the holder's head for a huge loss. The Panthers would get the ball back with minutes to go in the game. Vernon QB throws it up, but is picked off by Rutland. And on the very last play, the Voodoos would miss. This would end in a tie. 14, 14. Now let's take a look at the rest of the scores from AAA this past weekend. Now here are the scores from AA. Touchdown BC's High School Player of the Week is Jeremy Cancalongo from Terry Fox who had a great performance in his team's win over Notre Dame. Now it's time for TDBC's AAA Varsity Top 5. The first four spots are still the same from last week, but this week, in the fifth spot, we have New West. Joining me now is Dino Jeremia, our high school insider. Dino, we saw the Eastern Conference kick off their conference play this season, um, this weekend. We saw STM beat Mowat, we saw Kelowna beat Tweedsmere, and we also saw Mount Bougerie beat Centennial. What were your thoughts on those three games? Um, first of all, both teams from the Okanagan uh, winning is uh, great for the conference. Um, typically, uh, teams from the interior struggle, um, specifically if they come down to the lower mainland. So uh, Kelowna full value victory to come down to Tweedsmere and beat them. Um, so Kelowna is one of those teams that uh, I think we're going to be watching for, and uh, St. Thomas More uh, beating Mowat. So that's a that's a big win for St. Thomas More, and uh, interesting to, again to see Mowat after losing two in a row, uh, how they bounce back with their next conference game. Well, there was one team that uh, did not play uh, this week, and that was Terry Fox. That looks to be the favorite in that conference. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Terry Fox team? I know you uh, were at the game, yeah. Terry Fox, Notre Dame. Uh, what do you see out of them? Uh, Terry Fox is strong. Uh, I mean, they've, uh, they've beat some uh, strong opponents all year, uh, beating college and then beating New West and um, you know, really handing it to uh, Notre Dame. Uh, but they've got a lot of weapons. Uh, they've got a uh, very strong quarterback that can extend plays, a strong running back, a uh, couple of receivers that can make plays when the ball's in the air, uh, and they're strong on defense. They uh, really put a lot of pressure on you uh, with their defense. So uh, they're going to be one of those teams, very tough to beat uh, as we go through, and I think they're just going to get better. And for upcoming games in the Easter Conference, it looks like we have the Battle of Kelowna next week. 
uh, Kelowna playing uh, Mount Bougery in the Apple Bowl. Yeah. Uh, what do you? What are your? What's your take on that game next week? Uh, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I mean, if uh, if anybody's in the interior, that's a game to watch. Uh, like you said, the Apple Bowl uh, years ago, I was able to take one of those rivalry games in, and it's a great atmosphere. Um, so I think that the, the big key in that game is going to be Parker Simpson from Kelowna. Um, he's the guy that can separate and uh, make the difference when the game comes down. So if uh, Bouchery can do a good job keeping him uh, under wraps, then um, you know, Bouchery is going to have a good opportunity to win. But uh, I see Kelowna uh, coming out on top. Perfect. And now we'll switch gears to uh, AA, where uh, we saw somewhat of an upset. Uh, Abbotsford losing to Holy Cross. Uh, what yeah. was your take on that game? Um, well, I think it was a good, solid game by Holy Cross. Um, uh, interesting. Chase Claypool was out of the game um, by the second quarter, so um, he no, he didn't play the rest of the game. So obviously, uh, Holy Cross full value for the victory, and and um, obviously worked hard and and prepared and and came out on top. Um, but certainly, uh, without Chase Claypool, uh, Abbotsford isn't the same team. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've seen uh, cross-tier um, exhibition play going on, double-A teams playing triple-A yeah. teams and, and holding their own. Um, what does that show about how good some of these double-A teams really are? Double uh, A teams, uh, there's a few that are uh, really strong. Uh, you know, with the Barsbys, uh, we saw GW Graham. Um, you know, I think Bolinas is still a strong team in Double A. Obviously, Abbotsford. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that shapes out. Uh, it's great to see them play Triple uh, A competition and and take that challenge on. And hopefully, some of those teams will see playing Triple A in the next year or two, and uh, really competing at that level. Well, thanks, Dino. That is your high school report with Dino Jeremia. It was a packed weekend in community football with some big games happening in Midget, Bantam and Junior Bantam. For the first time I can remember in Bantam at least, every game was a complete blowout. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's begin by taking a look at the action in the Midget Division. Off to Midget we go with Chilliwack taking on Cowichan Valley. Opening kickoff. Hunter LaRock takes LaRock and he's about to get tackled down. Oh no he doesn't. Runs down the right sidelines and he's off to the races. Ooh, and a nice little touchdown celebration after that. Later on, Jordan Fox hands it off to Nashawn Douglas. He decides he wants to score and truck a defender in the process. Then he gets up and watch at the bottom right of your screen. Number 68 for the Giants. Boom! Nice little Superman Sally right there. Chilliwack up. And things just won't go Couchin's way. Mitchell Gudgeon punt is blocked and scooped up by guess who? That's right, Hunter LaRock and the kid has got some wheels and moves. Taking it back for a 37 yard gain. Next quarter, Fox in the shotgun and he's handed off to my boy Golden Brett Westad and he smells the end zone. Wait for the celly. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, oh, no, nobody's with me. Oh, man, let's just move on. Fox back under center again, but this time he'd overthrow Marius Angle, and Darion Hughes snatches it up for Cowichan. But Cowichan would be forced to punt, so Giants retake the ball, and Ryan Connolly finds guess who? Okay, seriously, can somebody stop this guy? Hunter is unbelievable. It's not even fun anymore. You're too good. Somebody get this guy a contract. Cowichan retakes the ball, and well, this play is indicative of how the game went for them. With Chilliwack winning big, 42 to nothing. Taking a look at some of the other midget games, Victoria tops Comox Valley, Coquitlam has their way with Cloverdale, and North Surrey narrowly edged out Langley, 15 to 14. The Falcons still stay at top of the standings at 3-0, but the Giants look strong behind them with 126 points for the season. The Bears can also roar at 3-1, also tied with 6 points. Over to Bantam, North Surrey, Chilliwack. Opening drive, Jumiz with the Madden-like spin move, get off me, Tigers ahead. 
Giants' next drive, and Nicholas Butler tosses one up right into a vicious pack of Tigers, and Sebastian Reed comes down with it. Tigers move downfield, and Caden Lilly scores the easiest touchdown of his life. Giants turn, and ooh, ah, uh, hey, hey, watch it. What, what the? Jumies jumps all over it and turns it over for a 34-yard gain. Right after that, Isaiah Anderson rolls out and chucks a dart to Jahi Minot. Tigers starting to run away in this one. Giants next possession and poor Nicholas Butler is lathered up in steak spice and dropped into the Tiger pit and boy are they hungry. Ouch. A couple plays later and things don't get better for Butler as he's picked off once again by Sebastian, reading his mind, taking it all the way down to the house. Man, this Tigers D is everywhere. Tigers will get the ball back and Isaiah Anderson finds Calden Funsock in a pack of giants, but the guys like melted butter slipping out of tackles everywhere and in for the score. That would be it. Tigers 35, Giants 0. Looking at some of the scores in Banton now, blowouts. Blowouts everywhere. Over in the Bantam standings, South Delta firmly remains atop the standings, but the Bears are waving in the rearview mirror. The Tigers and Spartans also share six points in third and fourth place. In Junior Bantam, Cloverdale buries the Falcons, Coquitlam humiliates White Rock, North Delta beats Langley by 20, New West makes Richmond look poor, and South Delta destroys North Surrey. The Junior Bantam standings are just nuts. The Cougars are undefeated, but so too are the Raiders, who have not given up a point all season. Are you kidding me? And looking down the list, it's real tight. And in Pee Wee action, the Wolverines squeak one out over Cloverdale, the Wildcats beat North Delta on a thriller, and the rest weren't even close after that. Coming back on Touchdown BC, the UBC Thunderbirds have their hands full with the Saskatchewan Huskies. The CFL and our partners at Football Canada want to make sure we keep growing, promoting and investing in a safe game. Hit! Football Canada now requires all amateur coaches to be safe contact trained by 2017. By creating a standard of safety for all in our football community, we're making an already great game even better. Make sure your youth coach is safe contact trained because making a safe game means making a better game. Welcome back to Touchdown BC. Adam, big game against the Thunderbirds against the Huskies. Yeah, well, we had that bet. My Huskies versus your UBC Thunderbirds. Who won? All right, settle down. Going into the UBC Saskatchewan game, there might have been some high hopes with a better record this season, but since 1998, the Huskies have pretty much owned the T-Birds with a 22-4 and record over that span. But hey, the Thunderbirds have Michael O'Connor and Taylor Loeffler, so they should be fine, right? Right? The moon out in full for Friday Night Lights at Thunderbird Stadium. Opening drive, and backup QB Kyle Siemens pounds it home, putting the Huskies up 7-0. Later in the first, Drew Burko under shotgun, and he'd find Julon Lynch in the end zone just like that, Huskies up 14-0. But UBC's special teams, namely Quinn Van Gilswick, helps the T-Birds start to crawl back a little bit in this one. But not so fast, said Drew Burko. He finds his favorite target, Mitch Hillis, who dips right around Taylor Loeffler and takes it to UBC's six yard line. From there, Jarvis Jones would say, thank you very much. Huskies up 28-5. Later on, Michael O'Connor would hand it off to Will Watson, who scampers in for a one-yard TD. Birds down 28-15. While there may have been a celebration here, there was not much of a celebration after that, with the Thunderbirds losing this one by a lot. Michael O'Connor finished the day with one TD to two picks while his counterpart Drew Burko threw two TDs. Huskies Jarvis James also ran for two scores on 155 yards on the ground and Mitch Hillis with 153 yards receiving. With the loss, UBC goes down to 500 while the Huskies move up to the even mark themselves. But because the Birds took a pounding, they moved from second in the Can West to fourth. 
Welcome to the UBC Report. Joining me in studio is Jim on the voice of Canada West football on Shaw TV. Jim, UBC was down early in this one. What happened? Yeah, they got down 28-2 uh, to two at one point in this game before uh, they could find a way to claw back and to get within six points. Uh, really, you've got to give the Saskatchewan Huskies uh, some credit, especially uh, their coaching staff in terms of some of the surprise schemes that they came up with uh, in terms of getting Donovan Dale focused on uh, the UBC Center. Uh, Donovan Dale is a two-time uh, All-Canada West uh, defensive tackle, uh, plays one and three tech. They can move him around that defensive front. And, and he created a whole lot of disruption uh, that allowed the uh, Saskatchewan pass rush to, to put pressure on Michael O'Connor, really got Michael O'Connor throwing uh, on his heels, uh, threw up uh, two picks in that first half, easily could have been four picks. Uh, it, was, it was a very tough first half uh, for, I'd say, at least the first 25 minutes. Thunderbirds kind of got their bearings again. Uh, but um, in, in terms of offense, it was, it, it, was a, it was a tough effort until they made adjustments at halftime. Uh, once again, it was the special teams coming, uh, coming back to uh, help them get back in the game. Uh, the one thing that UBC has a wealth of these days is athletes uh, that can do pretty special things with the football in the return game, whether it's uh, Travell Pinto uh, or, or Marcus Davis or Malcolm Lee or, or those sorts of guys. Uh, so um, uh, when, when, you have a guy, when you have guys like that in your lineup, you can always get back into games. But uh, there's obviously some issues that they have to work out with with their secondary right now. Uh, and uh, there's uh, some issues that they have to continue to work on uh, with uh, their offensive line and their protection scheme uh, for O'Connor because, uh, quite frankly, O'Connor is, is focusing uh, on a quick release, which he's, it just tells you he's not comfortable in the pocket yet. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how UBC's offensive line kind of looked like Swiss cheese, but how would you compare Drew Burko to Michael O'Connor? Well, uh, Drew Burko had uh, probably better protection uh, throughout the game. Uh, uh, he was uh, going with some high percentage passes. He was reading what the UBC coverage uh, was, uh, was giving him. Uh, Julon Lynch stepped up in this game after uh, sitting out for a game. Um, Mitch Hillis was his reliable self. I think uh, Hillis might end up as the uh, top receiver receptions-wise uh, in the Canada West. It'll be him and Rashawn Simon, Isaac Calgary, uh, throughout the game. And Jarvis James at running back, coming in for um, a uh, injured or sick Tyler Chow. Haven't got the full story on him at running back. Um, uh, did a very uh, solid job at, uh, at running back. So um, I think for the Saskatchewan Huskies, they really needed that win because they faced Calgary in back-to-backs. Uh, for the Thunderbirds, uh, you know, when you take a look at their schedule coming up, uh, I, I think uh, they can absorb a loss like this. It's too bad that uh, they had to do so in front of 3,000 fans at Thunderbird Stadium. And there's definitely some questions with the defense, and Taylor Loeffler is pretty much the centerpiece back there. How do you think he played? Well, given the situation he was in in uh, several occasions, uh, they're asking for a lot from him uh, at, the, uh, at the safety position. I think there's going to need to be some decisions made when they when they take a look at uh, at what their uh, what their match coverage is is putting him into uh, and uh, it's he, he's in a he's in a tough position right now I think there's a lot of information on film right now that they can take a look at uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the secondary and, and Loeffler specifically to put him into a better position uh, to be that guy that uh, can come across and make plays instead of essentially popping up uh, in terms of a lot of coverages. And you were saying earlier that this game you felt that UBC could kind of absorb the loss. Do you think they take the next two games against Alberta? Well, it's going to be one game at a time. I hate to recycle a, a, an old cliche. Um, UBC's always had problems in Alberta uh, going up and playing in Edmonton for whatever reason. Uh, games have been very close there. Uh, sometimes it's been a, a case of taking the Bears too lightly in the past because, quite frankly, they were, they were an 0 for team uh, pr uh, previous to last year. Um, I, I think that UBC gets the matchup that they want uh, when they have the ball with their offensive line against, quite frankly, the weakest defensive front 
uh, in Canada West in the Alberta defensive front right now. They're still looking for an identity. Uh, they're young in places. They're undersized in other places. Um, they've got a lot of issues there, and it may be a great opportunity for UBC to establish some balance in their game as well between the running game and getting Brandon Deschamps uh, uh, going and, uh, and, and taking some pressure uh, off O'Connor uh, in terms of him being able to rely on that run game uh, so, so the, so the uh, passing game can kick in more. Uh, we also saw it, it with um, Alberta last game how Jamel Lyles ripped him up in terms of uh, special teams. Great opportunity here for uh, the UBC Thunderbirds to cash in with special teams with this game coming up. Uh, I think on the defensive side of the ball, UBC's got to watch out in terms of uh, what Kopchinski uh, has to throw to. A lot of weapons uh, in terms of uh, the receiver set, whether it's Jimmy Ralph. Uh, whether it's Andre Webster, whether it's Tyler Henry. I mean, these guys can do some serious damage. They're, they're, they're quality athletes. And Ed L. Uh, one of the top three running backs in the conference as well. Uh, so uh, they might have their hands full up in Edmonton, but, uh, you know, certainly uh, it's always tough for a coaching staff to, uh, on both sides of the ball, to prepare for a team in a back-to-back -back situation, even if they've got that extra week off in between. That, that's, a, that's a tough challenge for any coaching staff. Well, there you have it. That's your UBC Report with Jim Mullen. Another CIS week is in the books, which means it's time for everybody's favorite weekly segment, the CIS BC Born Player Report. Okay, maybe not everybody's favorite, but my grandma and her friends can't get enough of it. Let's get started. Jamel Lyles once again makes the show the Surrey-born Lord Tweedsmere alum had a 73-yard punt return, rushed for 119 yards in a score, and finished with 258 all-purpose yards, helping his Bisons beat the University of Alberta. He also won his third Can West Player of the Week this season. Now here's a look at the rest of the BC-born players that found the stat sheet in the CIS this past weekend. Well, that about does it here for us at Touchdown BC. Adam, this, this helmet does not feel good. <laughs> well, it, it, it looks good, though. It looks like uh, you've uh, played football before. But you know what? I like how you fulfilled your bet, but I'm not going to leave you behind, buddy. I'm putting on the UBC helmet. Fits like a glove. <laughs> it does. Well, that about does it here. I'm Ty Clark. He's Adam Portick. We'll see you next week. Touchdown BC is sponsored by CFC. CanadaFootballChat.com is a national amateur football website and a source for high school and recruiting news in Canada. CFC's mission is to promote players, coaches, administrators, teams, and leagues from coast to coast. 40 plus local reporters write CFC's content covering Canadian NCAA and CIS recruiting and high school players and teams across the continent. Touchdown BC is also sponsored by Chris Peckett. Veteran trial lawyer and football coach is now restricting his law practice to motor vehicle personal injury claims. Call his office at 604-519-6060 for a free consultation.